So welcome, guys. Thanks for coming back to the Dr. Mo Show, where we explore how people have taken a non-traditional route to success. Um, I've got Nate Newberry today, who goes by Nathaniel, Nathan, Nate, depending on the country. And I am super excited to hear how you went from, especially during COVID, we were talking a little bit before, from what you would expect in a career path to what you do now. That's right. I appreciate you having me on. I'm super pumped to to speak with your audience and help out in any way I can. Uh, but yeah, my my story started off with working with nonprofits. I was a pastor, Christian pastor for years. And then uh, that route was very interesting because after you know going from Europe, being a missionary to being back here in the States, trying to figure out my whole career, I had a theology degree, but I didn't know what to do. I was like, what do I do? I, it was it was very challenging because now I didn't know you know how to do remote gigs or whatever, and that put me into a point where I started wanting to work with my hands. Because after speaking with people quite a bit, you're like, I just want to build something with my own two hands. And so I started a construction business that went sideways. Like I went, I had like 15 employees. I had trucks, materials, an office, and I just started hating it. But what I did like was the marketing side because I figured out online stuff how to get leads. And how to set myself up with online presence. And that was the navigation, the start of it. After I closed down that one business, I was $60,000 in the hole. That was a bad venture of mine, I'm trying to figure it out. Almost lost my marriage at one point, I'm challenging with like newborns because it was just trying to figure out the new entrepreneurship journey early in the 20s, trying to figure that all out, right? I was ambition. I was ambitious, driven personality type of person that's always you know, leading in sports and in leadership roles. And just because I'm cut from that cloth, it's maybe different for everybody. But I that got me into the realm of like marketing. And so I owned my own marketing company for nine years before I sold that. And then there's a big overlap with sales and, and marketing. And so now I help build teams uh, with sales and marketing, building online brands that, you know, have big reach uh, with generating more leads and, and sales and everything. But uh, that was, it was very unique because it, the start of my career, like your question is like the more traditional route for having a career and ambition with different things. And it just pointed me in a different direction where most of the time people don't relate or connect with why you're doing things. There's, a, there, there's people that want you to lose they, that probably don't support you. Like uh, my wife is as amazing as she is, didn't know why I did what I did. And that was not an easy journey uh, at all to kind of like sell her into saying this vision is bigger than just having a day-to-day -day job, you know? So uh, it's it's not a easy for everybody by any means. I I have to grab that point. I have to, I have to explore that a little bit because one of the biggest hardships I went through and I'm still going through from time to time from my switch you know, those of you who have seen me on the other shows, I went from a traditional career in medicine now to a whole host of other non-traditional things. And when even your spouse, that person, the best friend, the closest mm -hmm. person to you cannot understand, can't see your vision, right? And we hear all the time, it's not their job to see your vision, but it is their job. It's, it's your job to be present in your marriage, be present at home while having this larger than life vision that is for them. And that's a tough thing to reconcile. Yeah. Well, the big switch in the line of the sand moment for me is because I'm coming from California, San Diego area, where it's like I surfed more of a slower pace vibe. And so I give that off sometimes in my personality, even though I'm pretty driven, obsessive type of person, I have more of a laid back approach with how I am. But I used to go with the flow quite a bit with just like making decisions, having life happen at me instead of me being in control of that. And the biggest moment for me, the line in the sand was when my wife came to me when she was pregnant. I'm the sole breadwinner. I'm going in from transitioning my business to being a marketing company. I'm like, it got real for me pretty quickly. And now she's like, hey, if you can't figure out how to make more money for us with this kid on the way, go get a job. And it was a defining moment because I'm like, all right, now I got to get really serious. It's like the turning pro moment and where it's like, you're going from gear two to gear a hundred because you're like, I got to make this right. There is no B plan. This is, you know, balls to the wall kind of focus and fuel with that. And that, that gave me a new limit. So it's like, you're, you're an athlete. 
right? You push yourself to a point where it's like, oh, it's super hard. But then you realize after you do that for a while, your ceiling expands and grows. And so it's that same thing when I started my business where it was hard to wake up each moment when you have debt collectors and other people at your heels and you're trying to figure out how to do your best with employees or the growth. And it's not easy to continue to push forward when you feel like you just want to stay in bed. But those are the moments that define so, so much about yourself and your business and your future growth and success. That that point is the point that I see in my coaching clients Mm -hmm. where, frankly, the majority of them will slide back into perceived safety. Mm -hmm. How did you and and you had said before, you're you're cut from the cloth of you, you just you're very ambitious, obviously. So are so are physicians from my end, from from my side, we're ambitious. But why are so many? What's the defining characteristics? So many of the traditional people who are just saying, you know, what, I'm just going to go back and get a job. What made you say, I am not going back to that life? I mean, that's such a good question. I, I don't know if I have the full answer, right? I don't think anybody realizes no why they're doing it. I think the, the deepest part of us and the roots of it is like, I want to do more for others than myself. And so I got to create something if there isn't something that it can help me drive that and uh, if you're coming from that fa- place of like trying to look at if I help others first then you're going to have that in return I think that was kind of my 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 driving factor with it because I knew that there was more I can give and so uh, I mean I've had that like uh, I'll, I'll completely agree with you or admit that when I when that happened I I knew what drive I had to do to get out of that craziness but I did go get a job, but one I got that was balancing both where I could do that. And there was times and seasons where I had to go, you know, full-time job, had my marketing company that turned into a whole sales coaching company and and building brand. But uh, at night I'd go and and pour drinks at a hotel bar. After that, I would go and fold linens at a hotel on the weekends. I did stuff. I mean, there's the hustle and grind of like doing whatever it takes to make ends meet, make things happen. That was very good for me, even though I hated it and it was very hard. It, when you get those moments where it's like, you, you do whatever, you you get crafty pretty quickly with whatever you need to do. That that was helpful to know way past of what was possible in your life. But it was just really kind of dialing in, who do I help and how do I help them um, that helped me kind of point me in that direction with, with most what I wanted to do, yeah. You know, and and I'm not a big burn the boats fan, right? You got to pay the bills. So I'm not the one, oh, quit your corporate job and just go all in. And you did exactly that. You got a job that it it was a job. You know what? This is to pay the bills in service of my larger goal. So, you know, it was all in that process. And I think that's really where the difference lies. You know, I've had people, I've had clients who, you know, I've helped them start their own practices and their own online practices and, and, To them, it became just simpler to go fold linens. Now, realistically, what they're doing is seeing patients in the hospital, but it's the same thing. My dad calls it skimming slag. You know, you're still trading a dollar for an hour or an hour for a dollar. Whereas this is something bigger. You can help hundreds of thousands of people with what you do now. Mm -hmm. And that's an impact. I mean, with your, with your theology degree, it's the ultimate service, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of people have dreams, but most of the people don't do anything about them. I just knew that like, I wanted to do something big. And so I'm going to take all the ideas that I have and really kind of formulate a game plan to accomplish the best one that I knew that I'd be best at. Right. And that transition for me being in the service-based business to a coaching, you know, where I've been coaching many students with helping build on those brands or know how to do sales or generate leads and those you know, those times that were hard was also the best thing that was I'm able to help students with now, right? And so I I use that story as in a sense, most of the time people don't want to really take the bulls by the horn of saying, if there's something challenging, they just like, they give up on life where it's like, oh, I, I go back to the addictions or the set point in our life of like, this is where I was, this is where I want to be. And it's like, if for me to grow and be the best and service people, I have to grow in such a large way that the my, my set point continues to rise where I have new standards and ele- elevation of 
being able to help impact people so I can relate to people down in those situations that I was in, in life and business and health and faith and fitness and family. I mean, all those aspects of stuff, there was big challenges up into the point where it's like, you're now moving forward in, in such a way where you can, you can relate, but also help them in a, a really amazing way to help them set new limits for the, themselves and new ways to, to increase their growth. So as you develop larger dreams, different dreams, maybe not larger, but different dreams. I mean, you've already sold one marketing business. <laughs> you shut down the construction business that went sideways, right? Ooh, tried that. Didn't like that. Let's not do that again. No. Where can you see your, do you have any inkling of what the next dreams will be? It's just bigger, you know, big of a reach, right? Like I have a big online following right now on Instagram. That's amazing. I'm able to help more people and reach more people. Like, how can I do that more on other platforms or other stages that I can do podcasts and help more people or reach more people? You know, the, the big thing that people resonate most is just like the crazy backstory that we all have with about our life and the challenges that we've all really dealt with, the things that we can relate to and how can we take those dreams that you have and really come, come up with a game plan to accomplish it. So, you know, it, life is always evolving, right? I mean, I have two big goals with, you know, making over a million in my, my business and then I have six pack abs with defined muscles. So there's different goals that I have that you end up hiring mentors. And for me, that was the same thing. When I, when I started my marketing agency, I had no idea what I was doing, but now I had to get serious. So I had to figure out something. So I got a mentor with that. Right. And so it's like where everybody's at, if it's in all the gamuts of life, I, I get mentorship. I got obsessive with it. And so I've spent tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on personal development, because I just know how important it is because the one thing I don't have is more time, but I have more, I can always get more money. So how can I invest to buy back that time to really be able to integrate with the goals that I have? And oftentimes I, I've had it where I've got help in other areas where it wasn't my main focus. And so that's why I've like defined, and it, had, it took me a while to define those goals down to like a granular level of what that meant. Because most of the time people at the end of the, or the beginning of the year, they say, hey, I want to lose weight, but that's it, right? And it's not tangible. It doesn't quantify down to the molecular level of like how many calories, what kind of how many how much how much time I'm going to spend at the gym, or what am I going to do? You know that type of stuff where it's like you go get help with that. And I know that's what you do a lot with helping women to be able to do that. It's just the same way. If people invest in themselves of saying, "Hey, I know I could probably figure this out, but I just need more help." That makes all the difference with accountability and a game plan to just move forward with that success. You know, it's funny you say that because so many people say, well, I don't have the money to, to hire a coach or I can't hire a coach. I can't hire a mentor. I can't find a mentor. And sometimes it's not even hiring, you know, but the accountability comes from the hiring. Yeah. But when, when you say that you can, people say, oh, I can't make more money. Yes, you can. You can never make more time. And do you right. want, you know, if, if I were to tell you or you were to tell me, you know what, I, I can get your sales team up and running in six months and have you churn and just getting this going versus you taking three years and doing it on your own, I would be stupid to say no. But do you know 98% of the people that you say that to are going to say, I can't afford it. But you were under the gun. You needed, you needed to make that work. You needed to make that shift work. And you did, and you invested in mentors because you knew how important your time was. Time was more important than money at that point, even though you didn't have any. Mm -hmm. And you oftentimes it's beliefs too. It's like yeah. they, they have, they, the, the biggest objection in any sales is uncertainty. They have no uncertainty, either belief that they can do it or implement it or believe that someone else can help them with it. Right. And so this is where you have to like help them through that process of understanding and belief and understanding in themselves and also the, the positioning you have to help with that. Right. And so it's like they have to buy in of even the pain and hardship that it is. And most of the time people want to be comfort, comforted. That's, I mean, that's the, the lean, but it's just like only growth comes from pain and hardship. And that's where you just, you have to accept it and just be like, all right, this is the new norm. This is what I'm going to really accept and really lean into that pain and hardship. And that's going to be the best thing for people when they do. 
whether we want it to be or not. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I a tell good my coach wife this you. all the time. Like, like if you actually look at our, and as a medical doctor, and I know we got to wrap this up here, but we need all those rest times, right? God defined that at the very beginning. Like we needed to have a Sabbath and rest. But oftentimes if we don't take that rest we need, um, I tell my wife this sometimes when she's just all going stuff, I was like, if you don't take the time to rest, God will take it from you. Because that's where people get sick. Oftentimes when they're running burnout mode and they're just trying to do too much, um, they, you have to regulate themselves with making sure those alignments with things are dialed in with rest and recovery too. That's That could be an hour and a half talk on its own. It can be. So I will not get started. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Nate, where can people find you if they need help with sales, marketing, mindset, all of it? Yeah, if they if any one of your followers DM me on Instagram, uh, the word Mo, uh, I can give them a few different playbooks around sales or building a business. So just free templates I'll give right away of whole playbooks that I've built that probably be really really helpful for them if you have the business or they want to start a career in that. Um, I have some of that, but mostly on Instagram. But I'm everywhere as well. You just type in my name, Nathan Newberry, or Nathan Newberry at official. Um, on Instagram. And that's where you'll find me with all my content there to help as much as they, I can. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I cannot wait to get more information, to get all this information out to everyone. And I can't wait to see your next, your next step. I can't wait to see your next ceiling and have you blow right past it. Love it. Thank you so much for having me on. Awesome. Thanks, Nate.